Joining me now is my colleague, Forbes senior editor, Alex Knapp. Alex, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Alex, I'm so excited to talk to you today because you really wrote a story that caught my eye. And the headline was that a startup called OrbitFab raised close to $30 million to build gas stations in space. So first of all, what is the need for gas stations in space? Well, the, the basic thing is that satellites and, and the satellites that we depend on in our everyday life, ranging from GPS satellites to communication satellites to satellites that take photos for Google Maps and things like that, um, are all, for the most part, very expensive assets. Uh, they can cost hundreds of millions of dollars to build. Um, they cost tens of millions of dollars just to get into space. So the ability to extend the lifespan of those satellites by refueling them uh, is a really important aspect of keeping the space economy going and, and also making it cheaper to operate satellites and, and make the industries there more competitive. I'm trying to imagine what this would look like. So. On, here on Earth, obviously, as you know, you go every few blocks, every couple of miles, there's a gas station. What do celestial gas stations look like? Well, they've developed some concept art for them, and they, they look a little bit almost like uh, the refueling depots that you might see out in the fields um, in, in places that are kind of far away from infrastructure where there might be construction or oil and gas or mining activity happening, which is actually where the CEO kind of got the idea for this is, is those kind of mobile refueling services that happen uh, on the ground uh, for industries and in remote locations on Earth. Um, and then they're developing you know, these kind of smaller delivery satellites that could take the fuel from these depots, um, which would actually be manufacturing the fuel from the raw elements uh, and then shipping them uh, off over to uh, the, the satellites or other spacecraft that might need more fuel. Um, and they've even developed a, a common interface, which they call Rafty, uh, so that there's kind of a standardized fueling interface for all of these satellites. Uh, which has been adopted by several government agencies around the world, as well as over 100 uh, commercial satellite companies. What's really interesting is that this company was actually founded, co-founded actually, by a 30 under 30 alumnus. Can you walk us through the trajectory of when it was founded in 2018 to where we yeah. are today? Sure, the, the company was founded in, in 2018. Um, it was founded by uh, CEO Daniel Faber, um, who had uh, just left his previous space company, which was actually uh, uh, called Deep Space Industries. And the idea was that they were going to develop the infrastructure for mining asteroids. Uh, he told me a little bit uh, later that he was maybe a little bit too early um, in starting that company. Uh, but he learned a lot uh, from that process. And also that the company was acquired and its assets and intellectual property were acquired. And so he was looking for a new thing to do. And he had met Jeremy Scheel, who is our under 30 uh, list maker um, and co-founded the company, was actually an intern at, at DSpace Industries uh, starting, I think, the day before, the day after Daniel left. So they didn't actually overlap with each other, but they had the company in common and, and they had met up later at a conference and, and were started discussing ideas and refueling in space became an idea that they were very excited about. Um, and so they started, you know, raising a little bit of seed capital, um, hired some people, uh, a founding team to develop some of the basic technologies they would need, uh, developed a, a proof of concept, um, which they did aboard the International Space Station, where they uh, use water, not fuel, to, to keep the astronauts safe, just to demonstrate, though, uh, that the actual interface would work and that you could, you know, take you know, fuel a liquid from one satellite and put it in the other satellite. They demonstrated that successfully. Uh, and they since um, have contracts with multiple commercial space entities to develop uh, refueling processes for their satellites. And they also have government contracts uh, for refueling and also for the development of the refueling infrastructure uh, that's kind of needed um, to get everything off the ground. 